Well, I want to just say thank you so much, Dave, for joining us in the clubhouse, um, especially for this inaugural episode because it's Jackie Robinson Day. And usually it gets celebrated throughout the league, you know, big games happening, but now we're having to kind of do it in the technological age. But for the people at home who may not have been able to experience a Jackie Robinson day on the field, could you talk to us about what it means to you? I mean, particularly being the manager of the Dodgers and just, yeah, Jackie Robinson day and your experiences with that throughout Major League Baseball. Well, um, Jackie Robinson, um, uh, you know, himself, uh, obviously, you know, what he did for civil rights and, and, you know, just beyond just being a trailblazer and what he had to go through. And, and for me, um, being friendly with Rachel um, and, and Sharon Robinson and uh, David as well. And, um, to know Don, the late Don Newcomb, who was roommates and friends with Jackie. So to hear these stories and um, to understand, really understand what he went through and the responsibilities that he had that were put upon him that he really embraced. And I think that, you know, for me as a major league manager, as a former player, you know, you have this, this arrogance, this toughness that you have to have, but to balance that with the soft side and you know, biting your tongue at times. I, I just can't appreciate, we can't appreciate what Jackie had to go through because that's the ultimate sign of, you know, power, strength, and, and grace. Uh, and when to speak up, when not to, when to fight back, when not to. And, and it's hard for us as people to always think about, you know, it's bigger than us. But I think that Jackie, you know, really realized that early on and to see his legacy. And now you fast forward to, I think it was 2004, where Major League Baseball initially recognized Jackie Robinson Day. And at that point in time, it was like uh, one player from each team uh, could wear the, would wear number 42. And for me, I was playing for the Dodgers, ironically, at that time. And I got the honor to wear uh, number 42. And I just remember wearing my pants up and I just felt you know, Jackie burning inside of me. I just wanted to get on base and get my jersey dirty. And then now you can kind of look back. And now every year on Jackie Robinson Day in Major League Baseball, obviously Jackie's number retired everywhere around every ballpark. But now you're seeing all players, all coaches, white, black, Hispanic, it doesn't matter. Everyone is wearing 42. So to see his legacy, uh, you know, right now in, in this day and age is pretty special. Absolutely. And such a powerful legacy. I mean, something that you touched on is just obviously him as a baseball player, but also just as a person. And I mean, can you elaborate on that a bit more? Because I think oh, sometimes people look at Jackie Robinson, and they're like, okay, yeah, maybe he was a multi-sport athlete. And yeah, he did. He played baseball, but there was just so much many sides to him and you being close to the family. I mean, could you could you speak about that? Yeah, you know what, I, I think that that's the thing that people you know, and, and, and Jackie's life has really been sort of picked apart as much as you possibly can, which is amazing. Um, but obviously being a four-star athlete at UCLA, and I went to UCLA, um, and then, you know, people talk about the gift, how gifted he was. But I think that the people that were closest to him really kind of shared that kind of, um, that toughness that was in there the fight I mean and there was a burn there was some anger in there but there was like just the the intelligence of understanding that um you know he's got to essentially take it for the team and the team being all of us and um my dad was uh grew up in Houston and he was the first African-American uh student at his high school and so to hear stories that he had to go through and, you know, you're talking about uh, integration, um, you know, in the early 60s, something like that, and late 50s, late, late 50s. And so it's just one of those things where I speak to my players and coaches about gratitude and really paying it forward and understanding the people that paid the price for us. And, and no one paid a bigger price um, for us than Jackie. And, and it's not even just about black, white. It's not just about um, baseball. 
you know, this is across races, this is across industries, and this includes everybody. So I think that that kind of outlook and perspective and understanding, you know, what he really meant to, you know, the world is really overwhelming. It's, it's really pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, what a legacy to leave behind. And for all of us to want to make an impact on each other in a positive way. And I mean, I, I honestly, I, as a softball player, I grew up, I played softball, I went to Long Beach State as a pitcher. And it's just, I, I don't know, you feel that you're carrying a lot more than when it's just you out on the field. I mean, particularly as an African American playing the sport of softball. But then to know that at the time when Jackie was doing that, it was just him and he took that step forward. I mean, that's, it's just so powerful and something that I think that we all are just are eternally grateful for, you know, to carry that burden and the resilience necessary for that. Such a good hero in that way. Absolutely. Hero is right. Hero is right. And, and I think that, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, at, at whatever, at whatever point in your life that you realize that it's not about you and everyone's path is different. And, you know, whether you're, you know, five years old, just picking up a baseball and a bat or you're 55 years old and you grew up in the South, you grew up in the Northwest, you grew up in Europe, it doesn't matter. Everyone has a different path. And I think that, you know, Jackie had, had, had an opportunity, had a path, and um, we all individually have to do our part. And, and it's every day, we have a choice. And, and right now we're, we're uh, quarantined, sequestered in this, you know, because of this pandemic. And, you know, you have a way to look at it as an opportunity to help those. Uh, to grow as a person and I think that you know bus rides that he had and showering by himself teammates not accepting him uh, fans you know doing what they're doing throwing things at him berating him you know verbally physically and um, but he still realized that he had an opportunity to do something so I think that that for me is really I really kind of relish that and embrace that on the day-to-day -day. and I think that when you have that mindset to kind of serve others mm -hmm. and in a way Jackie was serving everyone else and um, you know as far as taking it like I said taking it for the team and doing things to help make life better for everyone else and create opportunity so when you look at it from that lens you know life gets to be more meaningful and it gets to be a little bit easier absolutely and i mean i think even right now in this moment where we all do have to be at home i think it gives everyone a lot of time to just think about you know what their purpose is or what they can do for someone else and so i'm really honored to have you on this stream to kind of encourage those people at home who maybe think like oh i can't make an impact i'm just a kid or you know i don't have all of these things to be able to just make something tiny and you know share a smile with someone, check in with someone. In what ways are, are you and your players kind of connecting um, during this time when you're all, we're all so separated, right? Yeah, we're, we're, there's a lot of uh, FaceTiming, there's a lot of texting, there's uh, phone calls, and um, I, I like to hear people's voices. I like to put eyes on people. So there's the balance of guys with their families. Uh, so you want to kind of, appreciate that but you also want to stay connected to guys so i'm more managing in the sense of keeping guys positive uh there are a lot of people obviously we want to be playing baseball right now sure and um they're going a little stir crazy so uh, i'm trying to figure out ways to be creative for these guys to keep their bodies and sometimes more importantly probably more importantly their minds uh, in, in a good space um but I think that I still challenge those guys also to, you know, as we look back on this uh, pandemic and we're going to get to the other side. Um, but, you know, wh what, what did you learn, you know, with this experience? How did you grow, get better? And, and even for the youth, you know, a young kid, you know, drawing a card, writing a card to, uh, you know, a healthcare worker that's on the front line. And I just think that as, as a parent myself and instilling those things that, doing for others to make somebody else feel good you know obviously these young kids uh being in their apartments or houses and they're going crazy and they want to get out there and expend energy um so how you can grow you can't go out there and swing a bat but there's other ways you can grow that are going to make you i believe a better baseball player but more importantly a better person 
Yeah. And in what ways do you think if you are a kid and you're like, oh, I just I'm missing little league this season or my travel team isn't able to play, like how can they still feel connected maybe to baseball or just to sports in general during this time? Do you have any advice? Well, I, I think that it is difficult. I, I think that the more the act is, as active as they can be, uh, you know, I think mom and dad might get crazy, but you know, bouncing any ball on the ground, uh, like hitting it off a wall, like a kind of a wall or a garage. Um, if you can get outside off, you know, something that kind of, you can catch your own ground balls and throw it. I did that a ton. And my mom, you know, I could still hear, hear her yelling at me when I'm throwing the ball off the garage, uh, you know, taking dry swings, you know, guys are watching videos now, but, but I think that, you know, right now, there's a reason why um, I think that this world, this country is in this situation as far as it's a reset. It, it's a kind of a call to arms for everybody to kind of take a breath. And I think that I encourage uh, kids to do the same thing as much as they can, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be playing baseball soon enough. I, I, I'm hoping so too. I'm like, here we go. I'm a Dodgers fan. So I'm like, right. go Dodgers. Yeah. <laughs> let's get the games going. That's right. Um, do you, do you meditate much in terms of taking that, that time to take a breath or doing yoga or any of those types of activities? You know what? I, I, I don't meditate. I do my devotional every morning. Um, and I think my faith is a big part of kind of me. Um, but I think that one of those things that I know we were talking, uh, I was talking to Gabe Alvarez, a friend of mine and yours about superstitions. And, you know, one of the things I don't really have a superstition, um, but what I do is love my quiet time because, you know, as I get ready for a major league game and there's batting practice, there's, you know, talking to the players and the staff and scouting reports and media. And then I need that five, seven minutes where it's just me and I can just kind of visualize the game and take a deep breath and slow things down. So I wouldn't say that's necessarily superstition. It's routine. Um, but I, I do that every game. And if I, if I don't get that one time in, I just feel like everything speeds up and I just don't feel like I'm thinking clearly. That totally makes sense. I mean, probably your players aren't doing this because it's men, but back being a softball player, my kind of routine and less superstition as well was just like, I have to have my hair be perfect. <laughs> if I look good, I'll feel good. If I feel good, I'll pitch good. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I don't have many options for my hair. So it's all right. Oh, it's so good. Though. I mean, I think that's kind of like the fun part of playing a sport like baseball is everyone is, it's an individual thing when you're up to bat or you're on the mound. It's only you, you know, but it's yeah. a team effort. And it really is about that camaraderie with your team. So do you have any fun stories about when you were a player? I mean, you won a World Series. I'm sure that there's some, some good nuggets in there that you could share with the viewers. Well, I, I, I think that, yeah, I was fortunate enough to be on a team in 2004 to win a championship. And I think the thing about baseball is that's, in, that's interesting is that at the major league level, we have 25 different players, 25 different personalities. And, and to see that all synced up at 7.05, and you guys play together. And like you mentioned that it's an individual game in the sense of batter, pitcher, pitcher, batter, um, you know, ball hit to you. It's your play. You got to make the play or finish it. Um, but ultimately it's about the 24 other players that you need, you need, and you count on to win a baseball game, let alone, you know, go through a season. Um, so I think that for me, just the stories in the clubhouse, the, the banter back and forth, the relationships, the bonds that are created, um, the dinners, the breakfast. We used to have a thing called show breakfast, and it's kind of a big league breakfast. And every morning at 10 o'clock on the road, whoever's there, we're going to go to breakfast. And, you know, those are good memories for me. And um, last year with the Dodgers, we had a bunch of rookies. And it's always fun messing with the rookies. And I remember a thing we used to do called credit card roulette where you go take this young player with a bunch of veterans and you go to a nice steak dinner and the rookies are all excited. And so what you do is you get their credit cards or their ATM cards and you put them in a hat and you kind of uh, stack the deck. So you know whose uh, <laughs> name's going to get called and who's never, whose name gets called has to foot the bill. And you're talking about a bill with 15 to 20 guys. So that number gets pretty big. So 
it's the funniest thing to see that rookie's name. You're like, oh, no. Oh, no. Hasn't even got a paycheck yet. And he's got this four or $5,000 bill. And, you know, wine's been served. So that's always a lot of fun. But, again, that the baseball, the games, the homers, the wins, you know, winning a championship. But I just think that, you know, the time in the clubhouse, the dugout, the dinners, those things are all, you know, all, all you know, relish forever. Yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of the best part. But that's what kind of makes something like esports, which has now become a sanctioned high school sport. And, you know, guys all over, even the MLB players, they like to play too. And I think that there is a camaraderie that happens within the esports teams as well, even though they're apart, which is so interesting. I don't know if you ever get a chance to hop on the controller with your guys or not, but. <laughs> yeah, so I, I don't. Um, <laughs> but my son is all about it. And um, no, there's a lot of, you know, these gamers, it's real. And obviously there's a lot of money invested in these teams and uh, these guys uh, take it seriously. You know, and I know there's, you know, sleep experts, there's diets and trainers and um, the ability to focus for long periods of time, the skill that's involved. So obviously there's interest and it's a different type of, uh, you know, stress uh, than, than baseball or basketball or football, but you know, we all train different muscles and I don't think any professional athlete can think that they can do what they do, let alone they think that they can do what we do. So that's what makes it special because we can all sort of appreciate everyone's skill. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, I, I can't wait to kind of see where the future of all of this goes, but most importantly, I can't wait for baseball season to start again. <laughs> so <laughs> in, until then, thank you so much for joining us in the clubhouse. Maybe we'll get your son to get on a stream to, to play. That would be so fun. That'd be amazing. He's, uh, he's all about Fortnite. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the fun one. You know what? He should play on Wednesday. All right. We'll, we'll yeah. try to hook it up. All right. Thank you so much, Dave. It was a pleasure to have you. And enjoy baseball season when it starts. Go Dodgers. Go Dodgers. Bye. Bye-bye.